Hi guys, it's Mandy Vaughn Knits and I am here to talk to you about sweater surgery. Okay, so you all know that my favorite thing to knit or crochet are garments, but sometimes things don't turn out exactly the way that I want them to. Now, I'm going to take this sweater for instance and pick on it. This was my first machine knit sweater and I mean I'm very happy for it for a beginner but look at this neckline like do you see what's going on here I, I don't uh, I don't want to live with this anymore so I am going to basically sit down take a look at it kind of brainstorm what I'm going to do to fix it and then try to pull it off the caveat is that I have no more of this yarn left and it's a limited edition so I have to be really 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 careful about where I cut. Now, I'm going to show you this all up a little bit closer but for right now I'll just try to explain what's going on with this neckline that bothers me and certain things that I did to try to fix it but you know I don't really know what I'm doing fixing it, so it just kind of made it worse. <laughs> okay, so first off, you can tell that this is just not very snug. I don't like it because it looks sloppy. It's all over the place and it's just... I'm used to sweaters having ribbing for necklines. I mean, this is a folded over hem, so or a folded over collar, so it... It's not going to have the same stretchiness as ribbing, but this is just not not acceptable in something that I'd want to wear outside. Now, when I knew that the neckline wasn't turning out the way I had wanted it to, I decided, hey, you know what? I'm wrong. So what am I going to do? I'm going to double down on it. So I took a crochet hook and I tried to do a slip stitch detail around the neck to, you know, actually, I don't know what I was trying to do there. It obviously, I, I, it obviously didn't work, but um, I thought it would look better, but uh, it, it didn't fix the overall issue, which is the main problem here, the, the loosey-goosey neckline. What I'm thinking about doing for this is I'm going to take a look and see if I can figure out exactly where to snip the yarn to undo the double collar. And then I am going to unroll it and pick up stitches. I'm also going to have to take out, you know, the double down slip stitch adornment, I guess you could say, that's around the collar. And hopefully that will go okay. I really like this sweater, but I think that if I can manage to pull this off, it will look a lot better. And it will be something that I'll really like wearing even more than I do now because it came out the way that I wanted it to. One other thing that I might change is I'm probably, instead of doing a folded over collar, I am probably going, when I pick it up with knitting needles and hand knit it, I'm more than likely going to do a ribbing, probably a one by one. Depending on how it looks, I might go for a two by two, but generally I tend to stick to a one by one twisted rib for uh, m at least 95% of my hand knit garments just because I like the way that it looks. I know that some people prefer two by two, some prefer one by one, some prefer twisted, some prefer untwisted, some like half twisted. All really a matter of preference. For me, it's definitely one by one and a twisted rib. So hopefully that should help bring this in some. I'm thinking maybe here. And if it doesn't seem like it's going to bring it in, I'm going to knit a row or two. I'll have to see how many stitches I have um, after I pick up and decrease. So that way I get rid of, let's see, this extra fabric here. That's quite a bit, actually. That's about a, like an inch or two. So uh, like I said, this is going to be a learning experience. Um, 
and I love to learn so hopefully this will not deter me from trying to make my hand knit garments the way that I love to wear them and I will have a great wearable item in the end so I am going to take you along with me on this journey so I hope you guys enjoy it okay so this is what I was talking about with that slip stitch um, adornment I guess you could call it I'm not sure what I was trying to do there but as you can tell I've used two strands and basically gone around the neck twice so I think that my first um, task is going to be taking this out so that I can get to the underpinning of the the um, ribbing to start taking out that neckline now if I flip it over to where I started I found the end and I'm basically going to just unravel it and see what happens. There's no real promise that this is going to work. It's been quite a while since I've um, done this one. This has got to be at least a year or two old. And I've noticed that actually as I was going through this, where is it here? Um, I've actually got another stitch coming out. Well, a set of stitches. I don't know if you can see it, but there's three stitches coming out. Well, two stitches right here that I've caught, and I've caught the end. So I'm going to also be fixing that. So the tools that I'm going to be using for this, this adventure, I guess you could say, is um, I have a crochet hook. I've got a size 3.5. Now that's going to depend a lot on what size yarn you're using. This one is going to work pretty well for the fingering weight that I've got here. I have a set of scissors, which I'm going to try to use sparingly just because I don't have any more of this yarn. So I'm going to try to unravel as much as I can of it instead of cutting. I've got a set of uh, stitch markers, all different kinds. And I have a darning needle in there. I will definitely be using that later. And I also have a set of circular knitting needles. These are probably a 14. And it is a size US2, so 2.75. They are my absolute favorite knitting needles. They are um, Chaya Goo interchangeables and I swear by these because they make it super easy for me to change out for what I need. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to be taking out the neckline. And seeing what trouble I can get into and if I can save this and hopefully learn some pretty cool things in the process. It's definitely interesting to take a look at what you made back way back when and then what you make now and kind of reflect on how much you've grown as a crafter and how much you've learned. Whenever I made this, I was just getting into machine knitting. And while I am still a newbie, it is definitely interesting to see how much I've learned since then. There we go. Crochet's not too bad to take out. I don't know what I was thinking trying to do this. Like I said, I think after a while, um, one of my main faults, I suppose, as um, a crafter is that after a while working on the same project, because I generally try to, to work on one project at a time, eventually I get to the point where, you know, I just, I, I want to be done with it. And sometimes that's detrimental. So maybe it's a, a good time to reflect on that and maybe put things in timeout. 
before I finish them. It might make for some better finishing at least. Here we go, we're making headway now. And what I'm basically trying to do is just walk through this undoing basically of this crochet slip stitch, this cro crochet surface slip stitch, just by kind of feeling out where the yarn is coming from and gently pulling it because I definitely need as much of this yarn as I have um, and can walk away with without um, cutting any of it because like I said it's a one of it was a limited edition and I believe it was in 2020 so it's definitely I'm definitely not getting any more of it I could always I mean at the very worst case I could definitely take out the ribbing and the cuffs and do it in a completely different color but that doesn't mean I want to <laughs> but I could so it won't all be lost. Oh, interesting. That's one of my ends that popped out there. So that's either to the neckline or the shoulder. I guess we'll see as we go along. It's an adventure. <laughs> or at least I hope it is. And not a disaster. is through, right? So we will persevere. It just might be kind of a, a squiggly wavy line instead of a straight one. have an empty string from something well not an empty rather a disconnected string that just pulled out so I guess we're just gonna keep going and here's the other one so it looks like I ran out of yarn midway through my slip stitching. Or rather, maybe I added more at the end? I don't know, but let's start working this side now. Oh my gosh, yes, I found it. And satisfyingly pull it all out. Uh-oh, it's stuck, me and my big mouth. 
This just looks like I wove in a part of the end here. More string. Ah, this just will not come out. What did I do? Yikes. There we go. Got it. That end was really buried in there. Okay, back to pulling. Yay, my favorite part. Okay, I've definitely got a mess going on here. Now, it looks like the collar was flat and seamed up at the sides. So that looks like a good place to try to figure out how to take this apart. Here we go, I got it. It looks like this is the part where I knit it the two layers together. So hopefully I should be able to pull it right out here. Ooh, I'm so excited. I found the place where it was connected without too much drama. Now I just got to get it unconnected. Give a little bit of tug. Gosh, I love the merino, but you know, wool does catch on itself. that way although it doesn't matter if those stitches come out it's not going to help in this instance
I know that the rest of the the neck right here where it's still stuck together will come out as soon as I start unraveling it it will be a hundred times easier to get that situated but first I have to kind of unsew it from itself I wish I were better at weaving in ends. I think that's going to be my 2024 New Year's resolution. I need to get better at finishing. And what better way to get better at finishing than force yourself to fix your mistakes?
Okay, I have all the stitches on the needle and I am going to have to work up this side. As you can see, I've got a loose strand right here. So I'm going to have to figure that out and reorient my stitches so that they're a little neater. But um, other than that, I would say it's pretty successful. So I'm going to take this off camera and knit up the ribbing and I'll be back whenever it's done. Okay, I finished the neckline. I added just a tiny bit. We're gonna say maybe three fourths of an inch. Not very much. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows of twisted ribbing just at the neck. And you can tell now it's going down and it's not floppy anymore and it's gonna fit great. Plus it has stretch. I really like the way that this looks as opposed to what we were doing here, which was basically just folded over stockinette. Double thick, a little bit too clunky, I think, for the neck. So I will be back in just a little bit to show you how it looks on, and hopefully there's a huge improvement because as of right now, it looks really good. So, awesome. Well, here it is, hi! Look, um, here's the neckline that I redid, and I like this one a lot better. I think that I was right to go with the twisted rib. I haven't blocked this yet, but I know that once I block it, the stitches will kind of zhuzh up. <laughs> I guess I don't know what I want to probably you know just lay a little nicer as you could tell from when the close-up when I showed you the neckline they're just a little messy but usually those smooth right out whenever you you let the garment lay in some blacking water so I mean I'm not worried about it I love how this came out and I think that it lays a lot nicer than it did previously. I wasn't a big fan of the folded over neckline for many reasons. The first of which was way too big. There was no cin cin cinching, sorry, cinching like you would get with normal ribbing. Which, I mean, I could have lived without if it wasn't that big. Looking back on it, I should have definitely cast off stitches, decreased stitches, got rid of some of those stitches for the neckline if I was if I was ever going to use a folded over neckline again, that's what I would do just so that it laid a little flatter. I would have also not done as much. The neckline was very thick, so not only did you have a neck that didn't cinch in. It was super thick and double doubled. So it was double thick and the width of it was very large. So if you put all of those things together, it just didn't turn out to be the neckline that I was looking for. And I'm very happy that I've bolstered through getting out the crochet slip stitch around the neck that I had done and pulled out the yarn. I, I only cut it once. And the reason that I cut it was that I tried and tried and tried and eventually I just gave up trying to find the edge, the end of it. So I had one more end than I should have had to weave in but I think that you know that was pretty good this is the yarn that I have left uh, besides some random scrap yarn that I ended up throwing away but I'm going to take this yarn and probably throw it in a scrap blanket or I might keep it around just in case I need to darn anything on this sweater 
but probably not as if you look at it I still have cuffs so if, if worst came to worst I could take out the cuffs like I did with the neckline and just do ribbing and I'd have a bunch of extra yarn left over but I would give this fix a, a C plus I mean I'm happy with it I think that it looks great um, I would give myself a C plus just because I could have probably went a little bit longer. I had, I only worked, I think eight or nine inches of twisted ribbing and that's pretty shallow, but I love how it looks on here, but the matchy part of me is going to say C plus just because, you know, the neckline and the cuffs, they don't match. So, it is what it is. I, I definitely will wear this more just because of the neckline though. So, I hope that this YouTube video went through the steps that you would do. Now, just because this is machine knit doesn't mean that you can't immediately transfer everything that I did to hand knitting because in the grand scheme of things, machine knitting and hand knitting are pretty similar. Obviously, I worked this sweater flat, but it everything that I did transfers right along to a round uh, sweater that you would knit in the round. All you have to do, to do is dig out the ends that you wove in for your neck and just unravel it. In fact, it might be easier for you because you didn't double down and crochet the slip stitch chain around um the neckline which you'll also you'd also have to rip out which was a pain in the butt i'll remember that next time whenever i'm not happy with the neck and i'm thinking of ways to make me happier with the neck that isn't taking out the neck which is what i should have done but you know as i learn more as a crafter, as a knitter, as a crocheter, my skill set improves and I learn lessons that might be obvious for people who've been doing this for a long time, but for a little newbie me, you know. Anyways, I hope that this entertained you for a little bit or maybe taught you something. Maybe you decided to go on the adventure with me of learning how to take out some knitting and fix a, a neckline. And if you like this video and you'd like to see more content like this, please click the like button or subscribe and leave a comment. It would, it would make my day. So I hope to see you guys later and you can check me out on Instagram or Ravelry as Mandy Vaughn Knits. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Bye.